I have maintained in all of my years in business that suppliers are more important than customers. You see, I see it this way. There are hundreds, thousands, even billions of customers, but somehow there are generally only a couple or three or maybe four great suppliers in most situations. Great example would be Apple and Foxconn. So mm -hmm. Tesla has some amazing suppliers like CATL, Samsung, and others, but much closer to home, they have a new supplier in XAI, and it might turn out that this is their most important supplier at all. Here to help me figure that all out is certified futurist, Brian Wong. <laughs> How are your hey, numbers Randy. holding up in the futurism category? I'm still good. You know, You're still good. Top, oh, okay. Top one percent in predictions, public predictions. You know, it's all doing good. Top one percent. Look at you. Yeah. All right. Uh, wow. It pay it pays to only pick the certain sh the the good the uh, the ones you're certain of, right? <laughs> well, that's uh, like um, baseball players like um, Barry Bonds. You know, you if you swing only at the good pitches, then you get a better betting average. That's exactly right, hundred percent. All right, so you sent me over a note the other day, and it, my eyeballs just kind of spun in place mm -hmm. uh, because uh, everybody's all worried about X and whether it's making money or not making money or this or that. And they're worried about XAI because, you know, Elon made it a separate company and and uh, now he wants to spend $5 billion to, well, he wants, we want, we said we wanted, and he's agreeing uh, to spend $5 billion of Tesla's precious uh, pile of cash uh, to invest in X.AI. Um, you say apparently that maybe all of this is really a good idea, but I'm going to let you take over and tell us the whole story. So um, one of the important things to know um, is that X, previously called Twitter, um, owns 25% of XAI. They made that deal presumably because XAI, the large language model um, software company, needed to have all the text data because the large language model need text. And they were using all of the Twitter text for that. So in order to get proper access and real-time access to it, they gave um, X 25% um, of the company. So what does that mean? In May of this year, XAI raised $6 billion to a valuation of $24 billion after that. So that's in May when you have um, Grok 1.5. Right. So that means the 25% that they own, uh, the X owns, is worth $6 billion. Oh, yeah, that's true. So you know, there's just math and yeah. just what's what's happening there. And then recently, in the last week or two, we've had the release of Grok 2, which according to the um, the rating charts where people vote on how good is your large language model, it's like top four, right? So it's up with the Google Gemini, it's up with the best version of um, OpenAI 4.0, at the head of Meta's Lama 3, at the head of previous versions of, um, of that. So the other valuation of um, OpenAI, when they raise money you know, from Microsoft, owning almost half of the company, 49%, they're valued at like $86 billion, right? Yes. So now if your AI is comparable, you can argue that now your valuation might be comparable, right? Although it, there's more to it than that, more like um, what um, money you're making because uh, OpenAI is helping Microsoft make money. They're getting some subscription money and all that kind of stuff. And we don't know what the subscription revenue is that is uh, going into X because people subscribe to get access to XAI. Right. $8 a month, $20 a month for that. How much is in there? How much does that matter that you have a, a good... Um, Stuff. But I could say that a reasonable case is that we've doubled up from the 24 billion, okay. right? That we went from 24 billion to 48 billion. We're not maybe to the 80 billion because maybe we don't monetize as well, still early days, whatever, even though you have a comparable AI to that now. Right. Right. Um, although to Money of the Ward, you could go with Anthropic or one of the other ones that um, have a comparable AI and then don't monetize as well, have a lower valuation. But um, so, anyways, so they say 48 billion. So 48 billion, then 25% of that is 12 billion. 
right? right. And, and then, and of course, and of course, part of the forty-eight billion, as we always have to do, you always have to take into consideration who is the CEO, right? Well, or, or whatever his title is at X. I'm not sure X, right. X, X, AI, or XAI. I'm not sure he's the CEO, but the fact that he's involved, Elon's involved, mm -hmm. would create a greater value uh, than than say, you know, another another. Uh, comparable item, as well as the size of the computer that they're putting in would yeah. certainly have to be some part of it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. So the various people, and I think the most um, famous in terms of within the test community recently was um, Brad Ferguson and Matt Smith were trying to use some rumored um, advertising uh, number for advertising revenue number for X. Right. And saying that was way down. And so then you would then just take the value down of um, of X based on, on the advertising revenue. The issue with that is one, you have to include the, the valuation of um, of the XAI piece that X owns, which I'm saying is $12 billion now. Mm -hmm. And then also they ignored the subscription revenue, right? Um, which was, again, we don't have good numbers on that. Last year, we had, had 650,000 people subscribed to it. Last number we heard, various rumors in the range, you know, 60 million uh, per year, up to 300 million per year, you know, all kind of numbers in between. Um, but basically it helps to reduce the losses or, or even get as close to break even, even if the um, advertising revenue is down. Plus there was the, the famous thing where Elon um, got rid of 8% of the staff in within um, X yes. a bunch of people so that reduced the the, the burn you know right. by, by quite a bit so uh, my argument is that in the next five months that the valuation of X and XAI each will go to about 80 billion dollars each that each so XAI will release Grok 3 around the end of this year. Right, mm -hmm. and they've already built the hundred thousand um, AI uh, H one hundred NVIDIA data center to 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 generate that. They're training already, right? So then they're going to push to make that model. Presuming that'll be better, right? It could be the equivalent of a GPT five, and then that would help move them toward a valuation of eighty billion dollars, right? Equal to Open AI or perhaps better, right? And also they do stuff to monetize by integrating with um, X and Tesla and all that kind of stuff. And then, then the 25% that X owns would then be worth $20-some billion. Mm -hmm. And then X, the huge valuation bump there, besides just riding along with that, is payments. Elon was going to make X into a version of PayPal. He made right. PayPal, and he's going to make a PayPal version for, um, for X, which should be sometime this year. He, they, they're trying to target middle of this year. It hasn't happened yet. But then, presumably by the end of the year, that would happen. It would be, it could be delayed because of um, political or other reasons, right? The, oh. the, the bad politics thing, because they need to get certain states to approve. Mm -hmm. And if they can't get California and New York, supposedly they've had over 32 states, maybe 35 states that have approved already. Again, not updating on a frequent basis on this. But they need to get like a, a few more states to, and critically, California and New York to approve, to allow them to do payments. On that. Basically, you then get an account, and then just like PayPal, Venmo, you'd be able to do that. Right. PayPal is worth $69 billion. Venmo is worth about $48 billion. If Tesla uh, X comes out with that, they would have more people potentially, but say hey, everyone can do this thing or whatever, then you know they could get 50 million, 100 million, or 200 million people, um, users that would then have payments, which would then make them bigger potentially than even PayPal. Right. Uh, make them a leader. And then the, the usage factors in there, but let's now, say isn't, they get that, that. isn't there a yeah. Yeah, isn't there a ratcheting effect on that too? I mean, if you get more people coming in because they want to, they are using the X hey. version of PayPal, uh, they haven't ever used X before, but all of a sudden they want to use this pay this payment system because their friends are on it or or the other companies that they're doing business with are on it. So they come in, they learn about it from that. Now all of a sudden they're in the uh, ecosystem. That's right. That's right. You would then generate more business. Also, if I want to pay you, say, just like I say, hey, I want to pay you with Venmo, and you don't have Venmo, then hey, please download it, and then you get into Venmo. So the network effect there. So if I'm using extra payments, hey, I'd like to get you to use extra payments, 
and then you would bring people in. A company that get brought in, retailers, um, users, as you use this more and more, right? Um, so if we're conservative, say that's 40, $50 million, you know, in that range, then you add on the, the main business, say at 12 billion, 15 billion with advertising and stuff like that. And then you add on the, the valuation, 25 plus or 22 plus 40 plus 15, you're at about $80 billion, right? Mm -hmm. So then they're both within five months, assuming payments come in, assuming Grok 3 happens, then they're both at $80 billion each roughly. So theoretically, at this very moment in time, the individuals who are already invested in X would be able to do the same calculations you're doing. We're assuming that Elon has put all of this in front of them at some point in terms of some realities um, uh, in, in, for the future, because that's what they would be betting on would be a future with Elon. Um, yeah. There's also way more beyond that. I mean, he's even talked about dating services. But he's definitely talked about mortgages, banking services, um, all kinds of things, that, which were part of his original idea when he did the quote unquote PayPal. Uh, previously, he wanted to go much more into full on online banking. Um, mm -hmm. So we can be pretty confident that that's where he wants to take this. Um, so uh, therefore, with all of that future in front, then Elon needing to raise money by tapping Tesla would be silly. Um, he would be able to go back to probably his original investing group, or maybe even to you and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't right. that be nice? <laughs> right. And say, look, we'll, 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 we'll take people that are even willing to uh, jump in at the 5000 or $10,000 level uh, right. on the private offering. And I think he would probably have, it raises much money as he could possibly want as that kind of uh, Part of the thesis, <laughs> right? So once you get over eight billion dollars, you know, like over that forty-four billion. So forty-four billion was the purchase price of Twitter. Right. So if I get toward double, right, then I'm not diluting that much, right? But to say, hey, I'm gonna now we're doing another round. It's an up round, right? We're we're at double the valuation, right? So then I can say I'm going back to the market and say I I, I already given you guys the old guy the double, and so now I want another ten billion dollars. Right. It's easy to do, even though, yes, we're losing some money right. on the advertising side of things. But now we have these other revenue streams and they're pretty established. Right. right? Then I can go back and get that $10 million. And because Elon has helped, you know, make Tesla toward the trillion dollars, SpaceX, all these things, his track record is so solid that among the, the wealthy community, they would say, yes, we we will believe you. And, and this thing that looked bad for a little while, now that's look, looking good too. And so now you can you can raise and make the money. And then the other thing would be that because he has um, SpaceX and they and it's going to do direct to cell phone communication, they've been done all the testing on that, you know, downloaded, you know, 20 megabits, 40 megabits uh, per second to the cell phone. That would enable them to do um, low speed texting everywhere, like literally Antarctica. If you can see the sky, you can then get a, right. see one of the hundred uh, Starlings that can communicate directly to your cell phone. And Twitter originated from the short message thing, right? A you know, short text messages for the Twitter communication. They made them longer, but that aligns perfectly with that. So if you get 100 million people, all the T Mobile people to do that, then Again, it's a huge increase in the number of people using uh, X slash Twitter. Um, a caveat to that is that all of the um, satellite companies and all the phone companies, cell phone companies that are not currently signed up with, uh, so not T-Mobile, not uh, New Zealand One, not not Rogers Cable and Can, those ones are trying to fight Elon uh, with SpaceX because they're, they're saying, Holy crap! If you come in with that billion of cell phones, billion of users, you know we could be hurt by that, right? Yeah, no so, so and especially the, the the you know the original ones were all the Sally guys who very lost half their business to right, right. to um, to SpaceX. So that is something that could send them to stratosphere. So, it's, but that's more um, probably two years down the line before it's really really huge. Because even if you get 100 million people from T-Mobile, it's 
even the number of users at 600 million, you know, it's, it's helped grow things, but not insane in terms of like getting to billions. Um, yeah, and so then I've been playing around a very, very little bit with Grok, you know, over the months. And I did go in this week to see about the, you know, the upgrade. First of all, it's, it's so much easier to use <laughs> than the other ones. I mean, I don't know if everybody thinks that. Maybe you can let us know in the comments below if you think Grok is easier to use than OpenAI and the rest. Especially if you're already in Twitter, it's like, or already in X, you just, you know, just click it and you're there. The second thing, though, is I, for me, having immediate news, having the having the news of the day, having, having anything that's on Twitter, or I'm sorry, on X, I keep doing it, but anything that's, you know, happening on X is immediately available, you know, as a, as part of the search on Grok, on Grok is a game changer for me. And I'm going to guess that it's a game changer for lots and lots and lots of people. Um, so that could, we could begin to see substantial increases in uses of uh, X uh, compared to the others, uh, just just or of Grok compared to the others, just based on that fact alone. Yeah, I, I agree that that um, the the better Grok is, then the more value there is uh, in using X, and it becomes a alternative to searching, you know, with the normal search bar, which you yeah. know any of the search bar, or you can ask it, you know, tell me what's happening in in X on whatever news topic and you can get, get a more elaborate thing. And then it'll give you the information summarized in text form and then give you the links in, in X to all the things that are being discussed. So it's, um yeah. So I, I heard the other day that Apple is thinking of going into search um, or maybe they're already, you know, playing with it. I don't know. Other people are talking about search because, you know, it's going to, and the uh, all in podcast guys were saying that, uh, you know, this would be possibly one of the ways that Google might even be broken up is uh, being forced to, you know, not have, you know, split search off. Um, Mr. Futurist, mm -hmm. is there going to be a search in the future? I still keep going back to search, but I can see over time where my tendency might be to go to Grok instead of to search. I think that um, you know there is search GPT from OpenAI. So, and then um, uh, per perplexity right. is a um, another uh, language model that that uh, integrates a lot of providing links sure. uh, on the general, not just not for XAI, but for you know web pages and that kind of thing. So, I think that the integration of various forms of search with um, AI will it'll, it'll become the same thing. You already see it happen, and then you see it happen also with um, this company called Glean, worth what two billion dollars. Glean.io that um, does this does this search function for businesses, where it's like I want to look at all my PowerPoints, all my emails, all my Slack stuff on this project, all my um, project plans, and then it'll give you all those assets. Right. right. So we're merging all these things. So not just web pages, but um, merging in what's in emails, what's in all these buckets of information. Um, so um, I would say search is going away, but search is evolving into this unified thing where it's like everywhere I, ha I have my data in a Word doc, in a Google doc, in Slack, in email. In websites, right. you will all merge together. Um, then it goes to a, something that Eric Schmidt talked about. He had a controversial talk at Stanford where he talked about, you know, for music and for, you know, literary creativity things or us making a video that they need to be able to um, track and attribute and say, okay, you deserve a chunk of the money that we're making off this thing. Right. So there has to be some kind of pooling of that and then they're tracking right. of what's happening so that the people who originated the different content get to compensate it. Yeah, I think my watermark will just be my shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, one last one last thought on all of this. Does that mean then that X will probably need to have a search? Well, yeah, it'll be, I think Grok will be, will be the, the search. It'll, I think it's superior to, it definitely will become superior to the the straight um, 
uh, search tool, right? It'll be so you'll for use now the, people the, use both. Yeah. They use the question line for everything as opposed to like Bing, where you go in and they have it's separated between the search bar and the question bar. You think they'll be right. you think in Grok's case, it'll just be one bar that does both. I, I think all of everybody them, will be that way. They, they all choose the same thing, right? Because it doesn't make sense to have two, right? Especially if, if one becomes clearly inferior, right? Like why wouldn't you find a way to smartly merge it? Like why should I have two right. different ways to, to do it. Like eventually one's going to become better and then it'll be merged together for all, all things. And then also the, the issue then becomes, you know, does one become the dominant? Just like Google was the main way to search for a long time. Is there something where the AIs yes. merge together? Yes. Yes. And then that's what they're trying to get to. Like, does one become, start pulling away? Do three be, pull away? How do they, um, integrate that and then why would I use three different things right um or or more like right now we use like you know a dozens right but um you know just like in the 90s you know we used okay I use Yahoo I use Google I use um Alta Vista all these ancient things and then that consolidated mm -hmm. right so I, I can see that eventually consolidation will occur and that's what people are battling over now all right, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I thought I was done, but I have to ask you, the all-in podcast guys are always talking about DuckDuckGo. I used to use it, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago for you know certain kinds of search that weren't working out well for me on Google. Um, is there some reason why DuckDuckGo all of a sudden is at the tip of the tongue of four of the top techies uh, in the country? Um, I think it's, it's DuckDuckGo has made some deals with some of the... Um... Yeah, a search thing. I think perplexity may be using them. Oh. So, um, you know, like it, if you can't cut a deal with Google, and why why would Google cut a deal with you? Then you would have to go to Bing, go to DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is is one that would. So all the AI guys would then, I think, are cutting deals with with them to get a I see a, a pretty good search that they can have an arrangement with someone that wants to grow right. and someone that's willing to. Mm -hmm work with the other systems right so um it's it's le less than reset the table in terms of like okay we're always doing the google yeah but yeah. now we have the means to uh circumvent them etc oh uh, yeah that is so man i'm glad i asked that question All right. <laughs> <laughs> now is there any more to your story here i don't want to cut you off is there more to the x an XAI story in terms of valuations going forward. Of course, the the opening of the conversation was about the impact on 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 uh, on Tesla and the impact. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I suppose we need to talk about that. So the impact on Tesla, the obvious one for me is making uh, the the car and the and the robot talk, right? <laughs> because I think those are very very important. And the better they can talk, the better that's going to be for everybody. Uh, well, mm -hmm. assumedly, but I mean, better in terms of the product, the product itself. Are there other things that you see? Well, I, I guess integration of AI into Tesla's um, uh, factory management plans, pro programs, or would they be doing that themselves internally anyway? Um, I think that um, from what we hear about how Elon's companies work from Joe Justice and other people who've worked there is that... Um, the various top technical talent can, you know, choose to work at Tesla one day and then go over to SpaceX another day, come back and kind of like move around freely between the companies to work on whatever project catches their their fancy. Mm -hmm. um, so, like we have this ownership of twenty five percent of uh, XAI in X, having a five billion dollar ownership, you know, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent within Tesla of X and then getting that piece of XAI. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think it would be other XAI. Around, that, yeah. other XAI. That, that would make it easier and simpler to do these product integrations that they want to do anyway, right? Mm -hmm. That they want to have the voice control of the Tesla and all that kind of stuff. And then it, for me, one, I think it's a good investment because one, the, the, the obvious thing to go up. Two is it immunizes all of Elon's companies from lawsuits 
Oh, I gave a bunch of H100, uh, gave up my, my position in line to XAI. And so now someone, some random 10 shareholder, 10, 10 stock right. shareholder says, hey, I want to sue over that, Yeah. right? If it's all one thing, you know, or, you know, like having cross ownership, then there's no like, well, there's no conflict of interest. We're, we're all one big we're happy family. Sisters, yeah. Right. So one, because of valuation, two, because Pratha Korean is super, super intelligent, and three, to immunize against the lawsuits which have occurred, right? Then you want to stop that from going forward. And so it lets all the stuff play together nicer on that. Um, and then the something that the Brad Ferguson Matt Smith thing about oh concern that that um, Elon wants to sell Tesla shares in order to to, yeah. to generate um, to to fund losses at um, at X that goes away because if you get the valuation up they can raise the money on their own and then also if they're looking at how much the losses are like oh three hundred million five hundred million per quarter something like that it would I would just you can just tell the other investors, let's fund that, get yeah. get debt or whatever, you know, for the six months until our valuation's up, and then we do a raise, right? right? Um, so that having them have the patience or even going to banks or something else to get the money, mm -hmm. they don't have to then do the raise, right? And raising it through Tesla would be, um, I think, one of the inferior options for as, Elon as far, to do as that. As far as X raising the money from, as opposed to XAI. And so XAI just raised the money or should X right. raising the money right. the, that in six months time, like, or in, you know, sometime next year, like deferring to a point where you have higher valuation mm -hmm. is better. And mm -hmm. I think he has enough funds coming in that they're not um, cash strapped. Right. 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 So, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I hope everybody enjoys that as much as I did because it was, uh, I, you know, I hadn't really, I, I kind of felt bad, Brian, that I hadn't thought of those things, but <laughs> okay. that's why we have you. That's yeah. what, what would be your purpose? If, <laughs> you, you have loads of insight as well. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, um, we want to thank you, Brian, for coming on and helping us out as you do so often. And to all of you out there. It's been great talking to you.